So this is the next video. Um, this is about GNU and uh, well Linux. GNU. Um, if you heard about Linux, um, think GNU. And GNU is actually going to say GNU Linux because it's it's righteousness. Um, Linux is really the reason why it's named Linux is because there's a guy named Linus Torvalds who created a thing called a kernel and it was the only thing that GNU didn't have. It was the last thing GNU needed to become what um, Richard Stallman who created GNU uh, was pushing towards something called herd and he was going to call it his herd but it, it would have been it would should have been called Nunix or something. Um, but GNU means GNU is not Unix. The, that's the de definition of the word. It's a recursive acronym, and that's a that's a creative thing that Richard Stallman brought to these to the software industry is the idea to use uh, names that were acronyms for um, for phrases that um, include the acronym in the phrase, and it's called a recursive acronym because recursion means uh, what recursion is is it's a function calling itself. It's um, it's when you define, it's like um, to define something, you use the thing that you're defining to define itself um, in relation to itself. So uh, every package that's in the open source software world, the free software world, and actually open source is not a very good term because it um, permits the uh, idea of being able to sell something that is open. and that's harder to do and that's the reason why commercial software tends to put th compile things into a binary format that nobody can read uh, and sell it because they can control you through that whereas um, and as he's talking about without software that would trample your freedom so um, what GNU is about is it's about um, and you can read it here is um, GNU is an operating system that is free software that is, it respects users' freedom. GNU operates as GNU packages, programs, specifically released by GNU project, as well as free software released by third parties. The development of GNU made it possible to use a computer without software that would trample your freedom. Okay. Um, Microsoft Windows is completely the opposite. And um, even though they might be, they might be um, embracing open source, they will never embrace it because um, it makes no capitalistic sense to embrace open source software um, through the through the greed is good model it it won't work because it's it's when greed is good you're not going to you're not going to give people you're going to satisfy your own needs before you satisfy other people's needs it's the reason why in the bible it says um, you either worship God or you worship money. You can't worship both. And the reason why is because if you worship money, you will you will um, you will forget about God. And worshiping God means that you um, that you take into account all of the, the 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 respects that He expects of you to treat others as you would yourself. And if you if you worship God, then then when you do commercial stuff, you're doing it at the end of trying to uh, improve everybody's situation and give people's jobs and things like that. Whereas in the area where people are worshiping money, the end to which they're doing it is to their own needs. And so everybody takes a back seat to anything they want to do and it means that you're basically a slave to whatever it is they're planning to do. And so people people become slaves in the in the money worshippers universe, and in the God work in the person who worships God in his in, in that that universe, um, the the um, everybody is is working productively to the ends of doing good. Okay, and um, the thing that's kind of funny about this is that Richard Stallman is an atheist, but um, it also says in the Bible it says um, it is better to, um, to to it's better that if you didn't believe in in God to later on agree that you believe in God than to say you believe in God and then later on say you didn't believe in God okay so uh, you need to treat atheists as potential Christians all the time even if they say they're an atheist don't 
write them off as being non-Christians. It's stupid because eventually they might actually become Christians. So people who are atheists, um, it's kind of a risk, but you know, really, we as Christians, you can keep us in you could keep us in check by making sure that we are adhering to our Bible and if we're not, point it out to us and rebuke us whenever we're not, and read it, you know. But even if you don't believe it, read it so that you can keep us in check. And then that way, we're going to, we're going to see that the, we need to be in check and we need to be treating everybody nicely and making everything work and, and working to the ends of doing good, okay, which is the whole purpose and the and the focus of what Jesus was trying to do. And, and this is to all the Christians I'm saying this. I'm not saying this to the people that, are, that haven't decided yet. Those people are okay. That that they're not they're, you shouldn't be going out them saying you're going to hell because uh, the people that say that are in the Bible the Pharisees that Jesus was pointing out that it would be easier on the day of judgment for the sodomists than for the Pharisees and I'm sure he had some foreknowledge and God saw God had the ability to see in the future and one way of seeing the future is to see all possible choices that anybody could ever make and that's one way if, it, if you can't fathom the ability to pass through time independently one way of doing it is simulating everything and simulating all possible futures and 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 evaluate them to the nth degree um, with unlimited computational resources, and you can do it. So, um, <laughs> so, so if you're thinking about AI, you know, um, if if you're working on AI and you give it unlimited computational resources, it will see all possible different decisions you'll be able to make, and that's God does that. So, um, which you're going to believe, which you're going to work on, you know, and so um, anyhow. Um, the thing is, is that, is that Jesus put a morality down and everybody already follows it. And the people who think that they're coming up with their own morality need to kind of question it and figure out where it, all of these ways that we treat each other, did it, was, was it already in our brain to begin with? Was it part of the amygdala or was it in the culture that we were brought into because when you bring a baby into this world first thing the baby learns how to do is manipulate people around him to his ends and they does that by crying uh, for things whenever he can't get his way okay and uh, and it's up to the parents to ignore that and to see past it and figure out ways to control and train that little baby to become a really good person okay and so that's that's what parenting is all about is trying to is trying to get that being to to um to start to see the the logic okay because babies don't see logic that's the that's the last thing they learned the first thing they learned is how to recognize the things around them and start to understand that they're there and they're aware and and they can they can reach things and the next thing when they reach things with their hands they start trying to control in them and um, a, a corrupt um, CEO there's almost no difference between a corrupt CEO and a baby that has learned that he can go out and grab things and control other things um, regardless of whether they should go in his mouth or not you know and so um, a good person is going to understand reasons why they shouldn't go out and reach for things and they when they need to stop reaching for things when they need to stop pursuing certain things uh, a bad person will pursue everything that looks you know looks good to them uh, regardless of whether it and and not even think about it you know so if there's no logic putting into it you know but we all sin and we all are at that level so anyhow back to GNU uh, and so th the thing was, is what Richard Stallman, what he was really trying to do with this was to give everybody the, the, the capability in, in, to his, the, how he reasoned it, was he was back at MIT, and uh, at MIT, uh, Bell Labs gave access to, gave everybody access to Unix, and, um, and Unix was basically an operating system, and then they gave him, I think they gave him source code level access to the software, and then... Uh, 
around in the 70s at some point there was a lot of people talking about you know these we're going to be able to use integrated circuit to, uh, microchips in place of mainframes and so eventually people are going to be able to afford to buy a computer what's going to happen to the software developer what are the software developers going to do now that they're not hired in addition to the computer because the computer costs so much money you need the software developers to make it work if that hardware reduces to something really cheap then you're going to have to figure out some way to hire these developers to continue to work on the software and that's where the idea, the marrying of the capitalists that's in the brick and mortar that's uh, creating products mar got married with the software developer who was out here working with software on mainframes that cost too much money. The two of those guys came together and we created commercial software. Um, the, there's a place for it and there's also a place that's not for it. And the place that's for it is in the creation of applications that people need to use in order to do meaningful stuff in the operating system there should never be anything commercial in the operating system it should not even exist and the reason why is because the operating system controls your access to your hardware you bought your hardware you should have every right to use anything that you've bought in your hardware um, if you limit people's access to the hardware it's like you know, back in England, when uh, they had lords that loader, lorded over certain lands, and then you were paying taxes to them for no reason at all because they just owned that. And if you would, if you uh, rose up against it, they'd kill you. You know, or the Romans when they would uh, get the Jews to to um, tax, uh, they would get a tax collector to go t collect taxes from the Jews so that they could then hire. Um, people to come in and keep people in check so that they would be all um, supporting the Roman cause and um, and they couldn't like really um, go towards their own ideals or what they needed to do. Um, to some extent we became some of that, we created a civility and, and people are able to coexist and it's not good to have a theocracy because when you have a theocracy um, especially in the case of a Muslim theocracy, um, everybody, everybody's going to be subject to some of the extremist Muslim things that we see in our world is actually being very destructive. There is extremist Christian things, and the thing is you want to have a space where people have the freedom, they have freedom of will, but not to the point of like actually hurting other people, okay? It, it needs to be the freedom to do with what I want to do, but to the point where I'm not overstepping your boundaries, okay? And that's, that's civility, and we need that. Um, but the Romans, uh, some people saw the Romans as doing it right, and, it's, and other people know that it was doing it wrong. And when Jesus came into it, he said, I don't want to have any control over the Roman government. It will fall eventually as all kingdoms, all these things, fall, all the bad stuff falls and the good stuff rises. And so I'm just here creating a new culture. I don't really want to take over the all these kingdoms because the people who are in kingdoms are in really kind of unnatural spaces that people can't even really understand at the bottom because there's lots of politics. And if you've ever watched Game of Thrones and, and when somebody dies off, everybody just kills each other because they see the political relationships they're going to be created and they have to get in there at the right time so that they can guarantee that they're not going to die okay and that's that's what happens in our world and that's the reason why in the bible it says to respect the 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 people who run our country but it doesn't say and it also says not to judge people but i think that's really not to judge people eternally um it's judging people we have to judge to some extent. We have to determine who we're going to be around just by looking at if they have bad products. We don't want to be around them. Okay, If we buy from somebody who has bad products, stop buying from people who have bad products because they're just going to abuse you. Okay, And that's what good news is about. This is about trying to instill good stuff into the stuff we make so that we can use it tomorrow and so it'll be there for us tomorrow when we need to use it okay and um 
whereas Microsoft, their whole mantra is, is um, we're going to be here for you because we don't want you to ever really learn enough to actually do for yourselves. We're, we're going to hold your hand. We're into hold hand, hand holding, which is what Microsoft's all about is hand holding. They're into, they say they're into innovation, but really what they, and it, when they usually innovate, it's usually buy up another company, then paint a picture that they did it, but they didn't really do it because somebody else did it. And then their branding, they create a brand, they get you to believe in the brand, they want you to recognize the brand, so the next time you make a purchasing decision, you recognize the brand, and then you make the, the logical conclusion through, you know, not really knowing anything the affirmation that since you recognize it, it must be good okay which is the way we deal with brands there's a reason why they brand in the first place is because if you can recognize a brand there's a reason why they advertise to you and the best solution is not to ever be there for the advertisement so to not have advertisements is better is a better world than to have it a world where there are advertisements because the default fallback is is that if you can recognize the advertisement if you can recognize the brand the advertisement selling regardless of whatever they said if you can recognize the brand then it translates to the affirmation that um, to to affirming that it must be good um, because you recognize it because if you don't recognize it then it's not familiar it must not be good okay is and it's just a it's just a human behavior that we've got in us and so recognition uh, is important that you understand what to recognize and what to choose not to recognize um, it isn't choosing that the entire world is lies um, um, it, it may become that, that way because of deep faking and because of deep learning and AI and what they're doing with that stuff and you'll find enough about it on YouTube um, but just you know listen to me hear me out and and kind of take it in and I'm not I'm not telling you to forget your brain I'm bringing in some actual belief systems and some key points you can return to and go and research on the internet find stuff about it um, even if it's not on the internet and if you choose not to go and get yourself some encyclopedias get some a Bible look it up and you'll figure it out um, I'm just saying go and look for it uh, seeking you shall find uh, you know op a, do a knock in the door will be open to you so I'm just p putting it out there okay so anyhow um, and that's what these recordings are for so um, and so Richard Stallman was in support of GNU and he wanted he wanted that, that environment they had at MIT where everybody was freely managing the software making the changes that were necessary that everybody saw needs for he said it was the the, the real downturn was when the um, when the people who were in um, who were managing uh, MIT the people who were the, the administrators saw the need to start putting passwords on computers and he saw that as limiting people's access to the hardware limiting people's access to the computer that everybody had access to at that up to that point and then administrators wanted to give people smaller uh, they wanted to limit people's access to the computer because they wanted to be able to use some of it for themselves whenever somebody was there they wanted to kind of push them off and do something useful with it which is which is meaningful but the thing is is now that we have microchips that doesn't make any sense to do that the only the only thing that that can security makes sense for is to keep hackers out when we connect to the internet and so when in your own household you want everybody to have access to the devices that are in your household you kind of want to limit their access to the internet because there's some dangerous stuff out here but um, you but at the very basics inside the home you don't really want to put password on access as access on stuff uh, unless you're trying to keep something from the kids and just keep in mind that with Linux you can access anything that's in your Windows partition um, you can mount a Windows partition in Linux. Your kids can, and if you choose not to know that you can do this, saying that Linux is evil is not the solution. The solution is to understand what Linux is, to learn it, to love it, and to turn around and determine how you can control things so that your children don't start using Linux to get into things that you don't want them to get into. Okay or to not use a PC altogether, use cell phones and, and iPads and use passcodes, okay? 
and I'm all I'm I'm of both mindsets. Um, I I don't well if when I buy stuff, I usually buy it in a walled garden like an iPad. Uh, I don't usually buy it uh, in open source. What I usually do in open source is I support I. I put monies forth to the developers who rely on them. I don't expect to get anything back. Okay, giving is better than receiving. Okay, um, it's better to give than to receive. That's what we're getting in our in our I, in our Sunday school um, um, that we would get when we come around to Christmas time and everybody goes to church and they learn something. This is the thing you need to learn is is that it's better to give than to receive. And there's people out there who are making these these technologies and good news in support of them and how they're able to continue to do what they're doing is through the monies that people put forth it's just like PBS whenever you want that kind of stuff that comes from the public broadcasting system the only stuff that's going to get shown is the stuff you put money into and they'll put that up because they have to throw show something because the um, the what is the the FCC requires that they be showing something all the time. That's a regulation. If they don't if they don't show anything, then they need to show that they're not showing something because the context. It, it, if they if they do something that's that doesn't have a context. If you don't know you're watching something that's important or or from a a a, a, a known entity from say Nova, or if you can't really put a context about. The thing that you're watching, then it's easy to be it's easy to be misled, okay? And the FCC requires this, and that's the reason why they require station identifications. If you took a course in media 101, go to college. I've taken these. I took it from an East Indian lady, and she told me the reason why um, in America we uh, why in India they tend to think we're in America we've got all this stuff, and is because we, they get our our, they get our sit sitcoms and shows, and they think that our stu that stuff is actually truthful, and it entertains them. They maybe feel good, and then they come over and find it's a different issue, because then they find it's fantasy. And the thing, the reason why it's they have it over there in the first place isn't because they're trying to they're agreeing with it. It's because they can't make cheap shows that look as good as the syndicated content we're providing to them at a discount. So they're going to buy our syndicated content at a discount, show it to all their people. Their people are going to get entertained. They're going to come over here and and be disillusioned. Uh, they're they're going to they're going to say, well, this is nothing like what I saw on TV, and that's the reality of just what it's like to be in America. We all know that here. That watching Friends, the it's not doesn't make any sense for an artist that's earning thirty thousand dollars a year to have a two million dollar apartment in New York City. <laughs> you know, I've lived in New York City, and I know you can't get an apartment for anything less than about nine hundred dollars a month. And everybody in the rest of the world are completely unaware of that. And the people in New York City don't think there's anything else in the world uh, of America, such for people in San Francisco and people in New York. They don't see anything in between. Uh, when I tell them I was born in New Mexico, they say, "How do you like it in this country?" That's how clueless people are in New York City that that's like I'd say that's the majority of people in New York City they don't know New Me what New Mexico is they they don't know enough to understand that the atomic bomb was created in Los Alamos New Mexico which is where I was born in New Mexico that we have two um, we have two um, government um, labs in I mean we're paying taxes to these labs that are developing technologies for the government and for us, they're working on ways that we can that we can have better markets and stuff. They're doing all this stuff for us, and we don't even know their where they are. Or, uh, we're not even aware of their geo geology, uh, their uh, where they are in the world, um, and and they're in New York, and they're completely ignorant of that. They know more about friends than they know about their government they know about friends more about friends they know more about the the big bang theory than they know about um than they know about los alamos and 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 you know most people in santa fe for instance in new mexico think that los alamos has got a nuclear reactor that's working all the time they don't even know what a nuclear reactor is 
they've never heard of a one-shot reactor, which is all there is in Los Alamos. A one-shot reactor is one where you 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 do a you do a a, a fission, you you run to some particles to get together, and they they split some atoms and stuff apart, and then you collect information through various devices, and you go back and do research for s several years and come back and do it again. That's the only time they ever use those things is like, you know, every now and then. It isn't like all the time with the nuclear reactor, okay? And so the people in Santa Fe will never realize this because they don't really care. And when you talk to somebody who doesn't care about, when they care about themselves more than they care about you or anybody else in the world, uh, when they're selfish, they will they'll cut you out. They'll pretend you don't even exist until you start talking their language, okay? And so people in Santa Fe and in Taos will say that there's like this hum coming from Los Alamos. And the thing is, is they're afraid of nukes. And everybody in the world's afraid of nukes. You know, the reason why the nukes exist in the first place is so that we won't have war. If you knew that, then you'd probably be for nukes. You see, the, the reason for nukes is to tell people who value their life and value the people they love that it's it's that there's no way you're ever going to be able to keep other people in other countries from existing okay by nuking them because they can nuke you and everybody nukes everybody and the whole game's over with okay so nukes bring permit us to negotiate peace if we don't have nukes then we have war and so when we're when we have nukes then we don't have war, and then there's no reason to go to war. And the Republicans are always going to bring about war any time they need. What is it that the Republicans need? Uh, they need to stimulate the economy. And why would it? Why did we stimulate the economy? Why was it stimulated in the first place in World War II? Because everybody had been through a depression ten years before, and people were just eager to do something. Okay, because they didn't have jobs. Okay, and when that war came about it gave everybody a reason to live and do something that as a result of winning the war they turned around and became really successful so you will start to wonder why we had a depression in the first place maybe god said you need a depression in order to have a war and then have a stimulated economy but you're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to go back and go back to the rule books and say oh we just need to find some evil and pursue it you know that's not a good good way of solving the problem. The good way of solving the problem is to say that we're all evil, which is what the what the uh, Bible says. Fundamentally, we are all evil, and we only seek for ourselves. And until we start to recognize there are people around us, uh, such as GNU, is what they're doing. And when you realize that other people need to use these computers, and and you come to realize that it's giving you freedoms, and they're. You, and those people are interested in doing for themselves, but they also want to do for you, and everybody wants to be positive and productive, then there is a reason for democracy and all this other stuff that we want, okay? But when we start to be about ourselves, when we're selfish and in ourselves, and we only care about ourselves, uh, then we're probably going to be in the Microsoft realm of things, where we prefer not to know. We prefer to have our hand held somebody to be sitting there holding our hand the whole step of the way because we because knowing will um, because the pain of 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 um, the pain of having to understand um, is so great that it's so much easier for us to fall back on just being ignorant and um, that's how many children would you pref that you know that you want to teach them how to count and how to read and things like this and until they start reading they understand the value of it but in initially whenever you give it to them um, uh, at some point they say I don't really have any reason to know this I didn't need it yesterday why do I need it now and um, that's the problem it's the problem here it's a different sort of thing people choosing not to learn okay and so to this is something we need to teach in every major school in America and everywhere in the world we need to teach people to use this operating system as any time we interact with computers first foremost we need to be using Linux we all need to be we all need to do something on Linux we need to start writing some piece of software be it in PHP C C++ small talk choose your language start writing something in it learn how to program 
and in that uh, it's just like when people start to learn how to uh, play a piano or play a violin it gives you something that you can do um, that gives you some freedom of being able to, to to fall back on something whenever you're burnt out on something else and so it's something to fall back on and GNU is just such a thing learning how to write software is not the the, not the focus of GNU. The focus of GNU is giving people access to all the software that, that that has already been developed and designed and there's no reason to keep developing it because there, everybody knows how to make it and so why buy it if it's already been if, ever, if it's already been made and it's there. It's like having generic drugs. Um, we already know the, the makeup of the drug and it's easy for us to produce with chemicals the people who does, who who um, who worked on it are have been paid back their patents had been paid the patent is run out and now it's a generic and all it costs is the process of actually producing the chemicals and there are lots of people in the industry that are making money off of that by competing with each other in a fair market it's not fair at the beginning because it needs you need to pay back the people who are working on developing the innovating the stuff they need to be paid back for the for the risk they took to get into there okay and that's important but the thing is is there are people in the commercial industry who are like little babies who are just out there manipulating things and not really understanding no care about the stuff that they're working with and they're going to figure out some way to make money off of everybody else by trying to keep people ignorant and that's Microsoft Microsoft is in that in that realm they have people working for them that are making light a living off of this but the reason why they're here and they're not here is because people don't see a reason as with whenever you're in your in America and and the government taxes you if the government can't give you if and this is the reason why we had this whole reason to be here in America and not be in Britain is that we didn't we wanted taxation with representation not taxation without representation without representation means uh, we want your money but we're not gonna let you know what we're gonna do with it um, we need complete transparency in everything we when we spend money on our government we need complete transparency same thing here um, however with this it's gonna be much harder and so the thing here is all you do is you just throw money at the people and then maybe they'll have a blog where they'll talk about what they're doing that day and what decisions they're making and then they put up some videos and stuff like that maybe something on YouTube and then as they do that as people require that of them then they put more money into them to see what that they're producing and what tools are generating and that will permit people to really exist in this sphere but if we don't offer the money to them to support this then this is how we're going to get abused is by putting money into this and it's going to be held back from us and it's going to be held back behind um, it'll be like um, something out of the Wizard of Oz and you're going to the Wizard of Oz and you you don't know who is the guy that's pulling the strings behind the scenes and you don't know to what ends this money is really going to come back to like creating kind of an environment that's free and everybody's able to use now the people who are in the corporations are using this stuff already even though they're making stuff like this even Microsoft is using stuff on the back end they're using free software and the reason why is because their own security depends upon it um, if they didn't have uh, some free software on their inner organizations then they would know that they would be susceptible to all sorts of malicious code and stuff and so they might use stuff internal in-house like this but I'm willing to bet that somewhere back there you know, um, below all the executives there's some IT people and they're running without the I executives really even knowing that uh, GNU stuff and the reason why is because um, anybody who runs GNU Linux knows that you can't you can't trust um, commercial software and because they're always going to have more security holes on commercial software than they'll ever have in freeware okay it because you've got more eyes looking at the source code is the is the mantra of freeware 
is he got more people looking at the source code and more people concerned about the security that it's going to work correctly and they're going to pass that information around. Now having Microsoft involved with the development of open source software is not a wise decision because that means you're paying money to people that have every interest of not giving consumers uh, the same rights that they have. Okay, And the reason why that is is because uh, there's this business idea that business people know about. It's called anything that's good for the consumer is bad for business. And the reason why that is is because a consumer wants freedoms, lots of freedoms. The businesses don't want them to have those freedoms. They want to control those freedoms so they can make money. So um, for people to talk to each other, the simple act of being able to pass documents when you're writing proposals for a government, uh, say the government goes out and wants uh, to get a number of people to put up proposals to to contract for a job um, that they're going to offer for some amount of money and the governments even though they have a lot of money from the taxpayers they're going to be very persnickety and they're going to require everybody to write proposals to define everything that they're going to do uh, to solve the problem and the government chooses which one that they're going to hire okay but they're going to require them to do it in a file format that they're using in the government. And in our government, we're using Microsoft software for some stupid reason. And at least that's what I've heard. I've heard that in in South Korea, they use open source software. And, and I would say there are a lot of places in the world they use open source and they don't use Windows. And if they would use Windows, they're not even paying for it. Um, um, Bill Gates has actually gone over to China and says, I, I like how you guys are really uh, into this capitalist thing, but I really wish you would buy our, our Windows operating system. And um, that's, that's the way Microsoft works. But the reality is, is that in India, they use Linux. <laughs> and, and they might use Windows. They might use Windows, but it'll, be the, it'll generally be the, really, the people who are just not that smart. Okay? It's, the, it's the guys who um, value their ability to adapt um, who will who will learn Linux and then learn Windows and use both things, but use Linux when it whenever it pertains to security in their own in their own environment because they know that it's much harder to leverage a Linux platform maliciously as it is to do it on a Windows platform. That's the reason why people always get their ID um, stolen on Windows software and in, in Windows and while you're always having to get virus killers and then you turn to Linux to back up your back up your partition you know and you know most people don't even know what a partition is and that's really sad but um, all a partition is you got your hard drive and hard drive is where you store things that's that's that that worrying disk inside of your computer that's got little things that their little arm that's jiggering back and forth that's your hard drive or it's or it's a solid state drive where it's just some memory that's uh, a chip or something or like your little USB stick, but storage nonetheless. A partition is a way of separating um, it into pieces, okay, and being able to to recognize one piece as being a virtual drive, being a, a virtual a virtual drive. So like taking maybe two of those layers of your hard drive and using that on Windows and three on Linux. That would be a way of partitioning the drive, but usually it's a, it's logical how it does. The partition logical means that you um, use math or something to define where it begins and ends of one thing and another. So partitioning the drive means that you're going to put something on it. an op You're going to put a file system first, and then you're going to put probably put an operating system on it and an operating system when your pro computer runs it um, it starts to run a thing called an operating system and the operating system uh, performs all the services and all the bureaucracy necessary to access the hardware and keep things wor in working order while you're going to do your useful stuff so that whenever you get your messages in from the um, and from the internet and they're going to give you a little notifications and pop up on your desktop that services are running in the background to your benefit um, that's the operating system and that's doing that and your application is the thing that's and the way to recognize here I've got a web browser that's an application 
this stuff back here that's a desktop but this is called a shell and it sits atop a thing called an operating system and this terminal when I open up this this is Linux this is basically what the operating system is and all it is is commands if I go ls bin these are your commands and so part man faults egrep um, zdef zless all this stuff um, if rm remove a file remove a directory all those things in here are part of the operating system and those are those are not applications those are programs and an application is like a it's like a super program it's a program that has the capability of doing something bigger here's a, another one that will freak you out this is a thing called a this is called a hypervisor um, a virtualization and the idea behind this kind of guy is that you put an operating system inside of it and then you can run applications inside of that box and you can do it without the operating system ever know that it's running in a box on an operating system that is not it so I could run Linux run a virtual box put Windows inside the virtual box and then run an application inside of Windows on that virtual box and when I see the need to stop using Windows I can power down the virtual box and I'm still in Linux I'm my computer's still on but Windows is not aware it, it's it's put in the box and can be called up when I need it so Windows becomes an application now what this is this um, subsystem for Linux installation for Windows 10 this is Microsoft saying oh we can play that game so what they do is they put Linux in a box and they permit you to have Linux inside of there and when you need to use Linux you use Linux but then uh, you can put Linux in a box and then go back to the Windows system this is more dangerous than this this is safer this is dangerous the reason why is because how many people are looking at Windows kernel 30 people I've heard just 30 people uh, Linux how many people are looking at the kernels in Linux uh, millions billions billions of people uh, potentially and uh, it may be it's never going to be something as small as 30 and so this is the reason why we get security holes here and we don't get them here and the reason why is because a malicious coder is going to be able to to go in and it's like it's like when when you're determining security in a city it's much better to be in a place that people frequent like being in Times Square where people are just walking by if you're a homeless person you're going to want to be in the place where everybody's frequenting by because nobody's going to get stolen nothing's going to get stolen from you but if you're in a shelter everybody sees you as a as a solution to you their problems so if you've got anything it, it'll, it'll get stolen from you that's the reason why homeless people stay away from shelters and that's the reason why they're on the streets so if you hate seeing them on the streets the solution to the problem low-income housing so then they can go in they can that you can give them some money they'll go in they'll buy some low-income housing they'll have a week inside of a secure area then they can go looking for a job they'll be in the job make some money and then support themselves in low-income housing and eventually get an apartment somewhere else in the city that is away from the low-income housing which is kind of kind of like a shelter but more secure because the people at least are probably going to observe or, or you're going to be able to have things in place they're going to be able to have security cameras to make sure that if anybody does break into somebody's apartment they've got an account that it's going to, that's happening okay whereas in the shelter how are you going to be able to determine this is happening if if there are no wall I mean it have to be no walls but then you have no privacy and so uh, where what happens where does it happen uh, it usually happens when somebody's um, crawling across the ground under the cameras they come up and they reach into somebody's pocket and steal something from them okay so you need low-income housing and the guy to find out about this there's a guy on YouTube and his name is Mark Horvath so we do Mark Horvath and uh, invisible people go here and uh, he's got plenty of videos up on YouTube if we go up to YouTube, so we go YouTube, Mark Horvath, and he'll talk to you endlessly about this stuff. And it's, you know, when you listen to me, you're going to learn something. 
you're not going to be sitting around um, I'm not going to be sitting there throwing advertisements at you okay they're going to throw the, the YouTube's are going to throw advertisements at you I'm not going to throw advertisements at you um, and the way to get away from that is probably to start using technology like what I've got which is some um, uh, rock me and Amadeus. I won't go there because the minute I show a video on it, it's going to be YouTube content and then they're going to mark my video and say that I put something illegally in my stuff and then they're going to section off the video to protect the rights of whoever video that I had inside the context of my... See, there's no such thing as fair use anymore for video content. There used to be a concept called a video, uh, a video quote and, and journalists use it all the time. You put your video that you want to reference inside of the frame of a TV set and you put it on your program and then people can see it's in within the context of a TV set saying that they didn't this isn't from them this is from somebody else and this is video that we got from someplace else and it, and that's a way that they can quote things without without um, um, what do they call it um, uh, plagiarizing it's a way to control plagiarization is that so that you can reference, you can quote something, people who can reference it, and it won't be taken out of context like most of the stuff in Michael Moore's movies are. And there's a reason why most uh, conservatives don't like watching Michael Moore, and even the liberals probably should stop watching his movies because he likes to do this trick. And I, I've learned uh, something called, um, in, in school I learned, and I really didn't even know I was doing this, um, when I took this course but it was called Gorilla Video and Gorilla Video is all about learning how to manipulate video to the ends of trying to get people to to believe stuff and one of the techniques of doing this is by altering the audio context away from the video context so you're watching say um, Richard what's his name from the NRA and you're watching him and then you're hearing an audio context from somebody else that is not in the audience, isn't even in the room, and then you're putting the two together and coming up with some idea that isn't even real. And that, and then you go and you tell your friend, and your friend thinks that you're stupid because there isn't anything out there that's like that it's in that movie because, um, because um, this is something that Michael Moore likes to do. And he's really good at it, but it's um, you have to be aware that when you go to see a Michael Moore movie, he will manipulate the context and he'll do it to the end of trying to get through an idea to you and it's not always that it's a lie it's actually that he's trying to get you to become aware of something such as when um, the people in Flint Michigan decided to to um, pass the um, take the river water and use it instead of the water that was coming from the lake um, as as the water that people would be drinking in from their water supply and ended up um, giving people a lot of illnesses. He did that in a movie and it was worthwhile. It wasn't so worthwhile whenever he did Bowling for Columbine and said he could get a a rifle in the same day that he got an account at a bank that claimed that if you got a uh, account with them they would give you a rifle. Uh, he, it took him a week and he put it in the context of the idea that it happened within a day. So when you see things like that happen it makes you rare that you really can't watch some of these people when they do that so um, when I make videos I'm not going to edit them much since for my minecraft videos um, I'm not going to edit them much and I'm not going to I prefer not to edit the video um, and only when I have to and the reason why is because I'm afraid that I might take things out of context and so when I'm talking, I'm putting it on the screen. If you're hearing it, you can refer to it. You can see within context what I was talking about. Okay. Um, so anyhow, um, Linux is important, and we all need to understand it. We need to be teaching in our schools. The government needs to require that people learn this before they learn this. Because without this, you don't have the freedoms that you don't even understand democracy. Um, capitalism will, will will take advantage of you um, I I'll tell people that I'm socialist and it isn't because I'm like of the mindset of, of what capitalists or, or of what conservatives think of socialists that they go out and steal things from other people that's not what I mean I mean I believe in it, that stuff should be free so maybe I should call myself freeware but 
people don't understand that you have to do it in a way to just juxtapose your position from what everybody else is doing and it's maybe I should call myself a progressive maybe that's what I should say but the thing I like to put forth to people is um, this idea let me put them another page um, sodium let's put in sodium and I'm, and I'm just I'm not going away from the subject sodium is a key to helping electric okay uh, sodium is why is sodium bad for you okay that's something but uh, it's a chemical element and it is explosive sodium is an explosive and spontaneous explodes in the presence of water due to formation of hydrogen highly explosive sodium hydroxide is dissolves in the water and liberating more surface okay so the thing is is that when you think of salt think of sodium chloride not sodium sodium chloride okay that's salt okay this is salt this is a, this is what we think of salt sodium is an explosive if you threw sodium metal what it's called sodium metal so we go sodium metal and then maybe YouTube and watch it and they got lots of examples of this and you throw sodium metal into water it explodes it'll that they, they've been known to um, people who are in the um, who are in the uh, materials um, disposal industry know this that there have been people in the past that have taken huge amounts of sodium metal in dump trucks my father told me about this they would take a sodium uh, they would take a dump truck full of sodium metal and they'd go to a lake and dump it and it would just spontaneously explode like TNT so that's sodium chloride chloride um, chloride is another element it is a toxic gas um talk chloride in a tanker on train uh deadly threat and oil so this is one of our government's worst fears is that a terrorist a terrorist would do this um chlorine in a tanker uh this is one of the th things that our government would are watching forever and, and are afraid is ever going to happen is if a chlorine tanker ever leaks in a city because it'd kill everybody in the city so sodium chloride together is salt and if you're Christian you probably heard that you're the salt of the earth if you lose your saltiness how can you then be salty anymore um, it's probably the thing is, is that God was going to know that someday in the future we'd probably be talking about sodium chloride maybe he even foresaw that I might even be referring to sodium as socialism and capitalism as chloride and each in themselves is dangerous a pro-capitalism is your company town so if you've heard of the mate mate one okay so like we put up here mate I think it's mate one is it spelled like that mate one movie and so the mate one and it's a it's a famous and um, it's um, mate one American drama written okay and and it talks about a company town and when the company town was basically controlling the workers and forcing them to do things that went against their rights and the only way they were able to get themselves out of it was when they organized that as church way to go against that company town and that's kind of I think where all of our unionization started coming from when people saw the need to unionize um, to fight against uh, a company that would take over a people in a community and make them dependent upon them and so they're working you're working it's like you're working at Walmart and you're shopping at Walmart so you ba you don't live in America you live in Walmart okay that's the ultimate evil of capitalism is that you end up being dependent upon the company and not dependent upon the government okay and so the government is providing rights but you're not seeing them because the company is keeping you away from those rights by controlling you controlling uh, your level of living okay 
And so in China, the corporations that set down these these factories in China, they got two governments. They've got China and then they've got the one that they're that they're they're enslaved themselves to is the company that's hired them. Um, it might be Best Buy. It might be Best Buy's company town, their campus. They call it a campus, but it's a company town. And you're dependent and you're buying stuff in that company town and they're taking advantage of you and they might not even be giving you the same rights as they give you here in America. And that'll be the next thing I'll probably talk about in a different video, but I have to upload these videos eventually. But the thing is, is that that's, that's pro-capitalism. Uh, pro pro-socialism, and everybody knows that one, uh, uh, it's, it's what led to a lot of all these these big old dictatorships that were afraid of and communism and what China is doing and that's what happens with socialism to give a lot of money to a government it turns around and abuses you um, it, but there's no difference between the two because either you're you're giving it all your rights to the people you're working for you're giving all the rights to the people that that are managing your your land so and another example of that is is that um, if you gave all your rights to Linux without uh, being able to see what's going on and or being involved in it, that would be like a socialism, pure socialism, and uh, giving all your rights to Microsoft Windows without really understanding what your hardware is and where it meets with Windows and where it doesn't meet with Windows. And when you buy a piece of hardware, then you're at the mercy of Microsoft to provide you access to that soft to that to the hardware, then uh, you're completely uh, at the mercy of Microsoft and any time they want to make money is so to just release a new Windows operating system and you're forced to upgrade and how do you do that? You buy a new computer. Um, with Linux, you basically use hardware that already exists. So the computer you've had for five years, you could probably continue to use it until it just dies on you, finally. But it doesn't die for any unnatural reason. And that's the difference between people who use Linux and the people who use Windows. And Microsoft wants to offer that kind of thing to them, but the only reason why they're going to offer it or want to offer it is because they got Linux as eternal competitors. And so as long as, and, and they're, you know, it's just like Christianity, as long as we have the ideas of Christianity, of Jesus, uh, put forth in everybody understands that morality and the need to to have freedoms and to to offer people free will and the ability to fail and not to go and and force stuff down their throat and and force them to do things um we, we offer a, a better future for ourselves um that's not what a commercial world would want because the ultimate end of this thing um is to is to make is an aristocracy the ultimate end to this end is it, it, and this only becomes evil if the people who are in control of it don't share anything with you and that's when it turns into a dictatorship is, is whenever people fall out of contact with the stuff and what's happening now is Microsoft is going to try to control this and they're going to tr try to own this by putting more of their people at it and they may just, if there are no liar, lawyers around to even watch them doing this, um, they may even figure out ways of just manipulating in such a way that people become dependent on Microsoft. And at some state late in the game, everybody becomes dependent on Microsoft, either through their languages or their file formats or some sort of hardware that they're only able to access through Microsoft that was made available the specs were made available to Microsoft, but not available to the freeware community. Then you're they're they're going they're going to own you, you know. And this is um, and we in the Linux society we need to be afraid of this Microsoft three theocracy coming in, this um, worship of Microsoft coming into our Linux community. Um, that's going to pretty much keep us from doing things that make sense. We're going to be doing things that make sense to Microsoft. And and there's another problem to this whole thing is, is that um, when you think of a security hole in an operating system like Linux, um, it's going to be much harder for there to be a security hole. If you're in a commercial world and you're very corrupted, which Microsoft probably isn't, but there could be ones that will do this, 
and they'll say, hey, you know, we just create a security hole in our software, turn around it and use Bitcoin to sell it off to the highest bidder in some nation so they can use it to then um, attack another nation and we make lots of money and they're able to solve their problem which was that other nation that was disagreeing with them and it actually puts other nations in control of other nation com companies in control of companies and this is the reason why if you run a company and you're using windows software and you're any in any time in the future see yourself as a competitor get off of it and use linux um because Microsoft, someone at Microsoft, some executive uh, high up will probably go down the chain and, and you know, create a little coup and then they'll put in a little security hole in the operating system. I'll just make sure that nobody, and then this will be like that psychopath, there was a psychopath, psychopath, um, turn of century and killing hotel. Let's do that. I think we'll find him. H. H. Holmes, this guy. He created a whole hotel that was designed to kill people. And how he did it is he kept the contractors. Um, he controlled the car contractors in such a way that nobody really knew what the purpose for the building was. They just knew that it was kind of didn't make any sense, but none of them were kind of on the same page at the same time to really understand what it was going to be used for. And basically what he used it for was to bring uh, innocent people in, um, put them into places where they couldn't get out, suffocate them, kill them off. Then he'd come in and he would uh, rip their skin from their bones and then take and sell the skeletons to universities for a commission. This is, what, this is how psychopaths think. And the reason why is because a psychopath doesn't have an amygdala that works. The amygdala is the part of the brain that makes you identify with other people. So everybody, when your amygdala doesn't work, you're the only person in the universe. Nobody else exists. And so everybody else is just a chair, is just a commodity, a piece of furniture. And so it's like you see all these people that have flesh on them. They don't mean anything to you, and they just... they. And when you're in contact with them, you can't really determine their their emotions. You can't understand their emotions. You can't understand why they make decisions. All you can do is, and it becomes really frustrating to deal with them. And one of the solutions that you find to solving your problem, which is survival, is to take them and figure out a way to kill them and then uh, remove, reduce them to a point to where they can, or figure out some way you can, make them do things that make you money so that you can survive and that's what a psychopath does and our corporations incorporating uh, a company has become such in our government the lawyers have worked a way out to um, give a incorporation through incorporation a company all the rights of an individual without none of the responsibilities of an individual and for that reason it makes corporations behave like psychopaths because they fail to recognize any of the other corporations or governments as being like them and they see everybody as an answer to their survival okay so that we need to deal with this problem we need to deal with incorporation and people who think they're conservatives you're probably conservative to a point but you can't get past the point of the thing you can't see and that is that there was a point back there that people made a jump, a, a, a really liberal jump that really created something that looked good but was actually bad. And we've been making an entire organization based on that evil. And, um, and when those corporations fail, what happens to the people? Do we prosecute them? No, they leave and they liquidate the resources and they make the they take the resources, make the money back that the creditors would have lost. The creditors go off and make other companies. They rebrand and whatever people have, if it was good, they use it. If it wasn't, it's complete trash. And they don't get any righteousness, whatever thing they invested in them. Only creditors see it. The people that invested in the stock, they lost out. And everybody invests in our stock market thinking that... Uh, 
we're going that uh, when you invest in stock on the stock market um, you are going to make the money back and it's it's a risk and the other thing is stock market um, uh, the value of stock goes up and down based on things that are superficial usually like um, say a CEO just fires off a bunch of people and then people make the assumption that you've just optimized the organization so the stock price goes up so that's a common uh, thing that that can happen it's, it's stupid when it does happen and that sometimes they recognize it when it happens but often it can be done if it's if, if, if people are not thinking whenever it occurs and it becomes such because the people who are buying the stock are not really invested in understanding what the stock is of okay and if it's good or bad stock um, if if there if it offers freedoms or if it's taking advantage of some con some people in another country we need to be concerned about how we're treating China because um, if the people and not the Chinese government but the people in China and and keeping their government um, keep keeping their government accountable to the people because that's going to give them democracy if we don't give the people rights that we have in this country and we don't pay them the wages that we would pay people in this country for the same work then the corporations are going to abuse them and they're going to prefer to abuse them than to give us the the money to do the things and to uphold rights they're going to exist in this country to use it's like it's like a, a sociopath they'll be like a sociopath they'll say we've got laws that will protect us but whenever it comes to you we don't care you know we're, we're going to take advantage of people over here they're going to run you into the ground then we're going to own you because the your government's giving us rights and we're going to lobby the government to give us rights in this country and um, you're going to be at a loss because you won't be able to control anything and that's the that is exactly what's happening to us and so what we need to do is we need to get our guns out and go out to the government and say you're going to play rules by the game that's freedom is about freedom and about morality and we're going to kick all these corporations out that are that are not giving rights to people in other countries and not paying them well and when they jump to and they start to realize that we're going to kick them out of the country or we're going to we're and this is where the socialism part that the conservatives really hate comes in and actually is is valuable is and it's not good when the government does it and doesn't show you that they're doing it it's it's good that the people know that it's happening and see that there is absolute transparency throughout that when it happens is to go and and when they go to a company that they videotape that that what they're doing and everything in that company and that there are lawyers in place and that there are law enforcement in place and that they do everything by the book you know to, to the conservatives needs and that it turns around and it hands the reins over to somebody who can make use of that company better to to helping the people, the creditors, the investors, the, the people in the country to get all the things they need necessary from that company and kick out all the people who are doing the malicious stuff, okay, that are going to go against um, having a free, a fair market, you see, because if they're going to be taking advantage of people in other countries to the point of like actually not permitting them, you can't really pay them um, what they're paying in our country probably to some extent because maybe it'll make them so rich that they just won't work anymore but you do have to do things within respect to their to their living arrangements and then put up roads and put up telephone put up all the freedoms and things that make it feel good about being an American we will put it elsewhere and rather than bringing people to America we bring America to them that's about democracy and that's what we should be thinking about um, but the thing is is it seems like we got this national pride thing going I'd love to be in America and you're thinking about being in America rather than everybody in the world in America in democracy okay rather than so national pride is dangerous because you can you can negotiate any kind of evil with national pride and a good example of that 
Germany. I hate to say it, Hitler. You know, that's what happened with Hitler. What he did was he determined that in order to get the people united and all on the same page and and the way they're going to solve the problem in Germany is to get everybody to feel good about themselves, he came up with a mythology, he came up with things like the round table and with, um, you know, Knights of the Round Table, he came up with Darwinism, anything he could muster to, to make some way of leveraging the idea that the German people are superior to everybody else in the world and through that was able to get everybody to feel good about themselves which is what everybody's saying about Trump right now is that I like Trump because he makes me feel good about myself and that you let that sink in just for a little while this is exactly what happened in Germany and what they did is they vilified the Jews and the reason why you vilify a people in a political system like that or in a government is to get everybody on the same page of identifying the evil and dealing with it so that the people in power can control you and that's the reason why he did it was so that he could control the German people get them all feeling good about themselves vilifying the Jews getting the Jews out of there and then making everybody feel productive and that they're able to work because the Jews aren't there to oppress them which is the way which is the ignorant way of dealing with it you know, thinking that that's what's happening. But the reality is there that Judaism does create a kind of um, a kind of uh, separation. You know, it's 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 the Jews or the or the Gentiles, okay? And Jesus ended that earlier in the and I'm sure God saw that that was going to be a problem and in saw about a reason to end it, but there's still people out there that believe it. And I hate to say it, but if you have any kind of favoritism, any kind of racism, any kind of pride of something, um, it has, if you don't see people outside you as being like you and you don't love them, which is Christian uh, theology 101, if you don't do that, then there's going to be, re there's going to be problems down the road. And it may be that they're, they get, you kill them or they kill you. And that's what happened with Germany. And, that, and they saw the Jews as a problem. And they and and all Hitler did was just put them on trains. And nobody saw what he was doing. There was no transparency there. People thought, oh, he's sending them off to some concentration camp, and they'll probably return. It'll be okay. But we'll be we'll have a working German economy, and they'll be out of the country, just like what Trump's doing with Mexicans in our country. Then he's pushing them out to the outer bounds of. The America, and then supposedly we're going to make, we're going to take the jobs that the Mexicans are taking on. And the stupid thing about that is that most people are not going to be doing the work that the Mexicans are doing in our country at the price, at the, at the, uh, at the wages that the people are paying them. Okay, um, we aren't able to even fathom doing the kind of work at that level, and the co corporations are not going to give you that kind of money. You know, they're not going to pay a bagger three dollars more to encourage more people that are better baggers to come in to work those bagger jobs they're not it's not going to happen they're going to favor people who are at a disadvantage and they're going to they're going to get people who are retarded people who have um, problems okay and they're not going to get somebody who actually has the has the intent of creating good bagging doing good bagging skills making sure your bananas are not put with your with your um with your what is it, uh, your fabric softener so that you have fabric softener flavored bananas or that you put your bananas underneath the cans look a person who um, and I'm I don't have any problem with people who are disadvantaged but they don't understand sometimes they they'll understand not to put cans on top of bananas but you end up with consumers that are having to tell them no you don't want to do, don't you don't do this don't do that and if you had somebody that was there who really understood what they were doing um, working with them they could work side by side and the person that could see a problem coming down the road for the person that's disadvantaged could go over and then deal with that problem before the disadvantaged person came to it and so they feel productive and a part of the whole thing but they're able to produce a well bagged product in the and the consumer is not sitting there investing all their time worried about their groceries while they're sitting there on the cell phone talking to some client and that's another issue altogether so I'm gonna put this aside I have to go to work 
in what I work, I'm a bagger. That's the reason why I know what it is to be a bagger. And you start to wonder, hey, how does this guy like know all this other stuff and is a bagger? Did I say anything about myself being a socialist? Did that ever, you know, did that ever, you know, I'm more, I don't care about money. I care more about freedoms, okay? And I care more about people. I care more about people. I care more about democracy. I care more about, and that's not, you know, socialism doesn't really mix in sometimes, but it is. It mixes in there. I'm about people. I'm about freedoms. So maybe I'm a democracy a guy or a, but I'm not a capitalism guy I'm not focused on money I don't have a greed is good mantra or thing about me because it isn't okay it's it's a means to an end you just need money to survive but it's like blood if it don't flow then things fall off things die and so it needs to flow and it doesn't say in the Bible that money is evil it says the love of money is evil that is, um, the, the need to have money for myself is evil. It's when I see that money circulating and giving it and having everybody distributing it and trading it permits everybody to work in a positive environment. That's good. But whenever I hoard it for myself, when you store up into a barn and you're going to look at that when you retire, you're not going to do anything for years on end, Come to realization that whenever you do that, it's called a you come you come into a point and it's called a sedentary lifestyle. People die off within years. That's the reason why when people retire, they end up going and doing volunteer work. Is because if you do that, if you just sit around and don't do anything, which is like people's dream thing to do after they've had a long life of working somewhere, um, you find come to realization that you start to get edema in the legs. I mean, you get a swelling in your legs and you get overweight and you're unable to move and your muscles um, you get at atrophy in the muscles and you become a slob and you can't do crap and you feel awful and you eat lots of food and then you die from diabetes and something see so that's the danger and um, for storing off and and when it happens with rich people and they store a lot from their families they think that their whole family's future is going to be happy what they're really doing is they're breeding babies who control things and don't see any value in actually learning and so you end up creating problems from the perspective of 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 the ignorance of a person who thinks that they're actually producing a a good environment for people that they love. They're really not loving its hatred. It's just like not disciplining pop, uh, a child. To not discipline a child is to actually hate it. So if you see it, abusing a child is a problem, it's not the abusing a child, it's not disciplining a child. It's not showing them a better way of doing something. If you're not showing them a better way of doing something, it's hating them. Okay? And that's the problem we have is, is, is accepting the freedom to do whatever you want without any morality okay so i'm stopping it here